start with a question. Um, do you think your kids could do a better job than you of running your business? Now, if you're like me and your kids are eight, seven and five, then I guess the answer is no. Well, I certainly hope the answer is no. Um, but what I'm getting at is the situation where your children are already in the business, or at least where they're of an age where they could be. Because what I'm going to suggest is that uh, one of the key drivers behind the decision whether to sell or grow a family business um, is the trust that the older generation has in the younger generation. And what I'm also going to suggest is that when you reach that crossroads in terms of the decision, um, that can profoundly affect the way that you run your business and the way that future generations run it. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to briefly consider um, some of the issues around uh, growth on the one hand and sale on the other. And then I'm going to make a couple of kind of final observations, uh, which will hopefully stimulate some discussions in the breakout rooms. So in terms of sale, um, I'm going to talk about three issues, three key issues as I see them. The first is that a sale is invariably a longer process than anyone expects. Um, and so the key there is to start planning and, and it's never too soon to start planning for a sale. Um, and I think there are three things that you should have in mind when planning for a sale. The first is um, who's gonna be your buyer. So it's a, a case of identifying your target market. The second is thinking about what they are going to be looking for in your business and sort of maximizing that. Um, and the third is really identifying what they aren't going to want to see. And in lots of ways, the third is probably the most important. It's about minimizing those risk factors and the things that buyers um, don't want to see in your business. And all of those issues really go to the value of your business, the underlying value of, of, of your enterprise. The second issue that I've mentioned um, briefly is around confidentiality. So, um, I mean, in some cases, it doesn't matter whether a sale is confidential or not, and it can be very difficult uh, to keep the sort of proverbial cat in the bag. Um, but the key is to identify whether you can keep a lid on the sale and the potential effect both on client and supplier relationships if you can't. Uh, again, that goes directly to value. Um, if, if a sale is out there and it's damaging to either a client or a supplier relationship or both, that can undermine the value that you have in your business. And the third, um, and, and personally what I see as being perhaps the most important, is, um, is, is the sale mindset. So once you've decided to sell, or at least once you've decided that your um, future generations aren't necessarily going to be taking over that business, I think the enemy is under investment. Um, it's relatively easy then to take shorter term decisions, or at least it's much more difficult to take longer term decisions. Uh, and things, decisions around capital investment, capex, then become much harder. And of course, the, the real problem is if you starve a business of cash in, in the short term, um, you can reduce the value in the long term, both for yourself and for those future generations. So look, those are kind of three issues around sale. Um, I suppose the real thing about a sale actually is that it can be, particularly in the context of a family business, we can be looking at the end of an era. And I think it's easy to underestimate the emotional attachment um, of a family to a family business. I think it's relatively easy from, from my experience for first generations to decide to sell the family business because they can kind of say, well, actually, I think the cash will be more useful than the business. Uh, they might view the business as more of a millstone, more of a headache than a, than, than, than a blessing. You know, it's a curse, not a blessing. Um, but I think when you get into second and third generations, uh, the, 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 the pull on the heartstrings of, of um, what that business means, even where it's located, that's something my colleague Philip's going to talk about um, in, in, in due course. All these things can be hugely important and can make the actual decision to sell um, incredibly difficult. So let's assume instead that we decide we're going to stay put, we've got a, we've got a, um, a team in place and, and, and we want to grow the business. It strikes me that there are two principal ways that a business could be grown. Um, the first is organic growth. So just carry on doing what you're doing, but do more of it, do it better, do it more profitably. Um, and the second is around acquisition. Um, and actually that sort of, that, that bolt on growth tends to be um, a, a way of achieving more rapid uh, uh, growth. 
And it strikes me there are two ways that, that, that we can look to do an acquisition. The first is um, a direct trade purchase, so, so a purchase of a competitor. Um, and the second, in terms of growing a business for future generations, is actually perhaps to look at alternative but complementary businesses. And I think that often means looking up and down your supply chain. So um, if I can digress just for a second, I, I run a business called Sprint for uh, three or four years before I came back to the law this year. Um, and we grappled with these decisions, these decisions around to sell or not. Um, and and, and you know, we came down the side of, of, of retain and grow. Um, and when we were looking at growth, we realized that two of our three biggest suppliers were sheet metal workers. And so what we decided to do was we would buy a fabrication business. That wasn't what we did, but it was what, uh, as I said, we, we spent a substantial amount of money with fabrication businesses. And what that enabled us to do is immediately to increase margin. Um, it also gave us the ability to flex to an extent our pricing. And thirdly, it gave us control over our supply chain. All of those things being really important. So in terms of growing, I mean, assuming that you want to um, grow your business, I think there are two key considerations. I won't talk about those in any great detail because my colleague Tim is going to do that in the next session. But the first is, do you have a management team that is strong enough to be able to grow and to be able to persuade people to back you? And the second is whether you can fund a deal and the ways in which you fund it. As I said, Tim will look at that. But as regards the management team, that probably takes us full circle. And that takes us right back to the initial question which I think is probably the heart of the issue. Now, what's interesting for me is that there is, I think, a my side bias that lots of us have, which is that we tend to compare our own skill sets with those of other people, perhaps children, you know, parents, grandparents, whatever. And inevitably, we tend to assume that differences can be weaknesses. And so my challenge and what I'm going to invite you to consider in the breakout rooms is whether it takes a different skill set to start a business than to grow it and to consolidate it. And so perhaps the answer to whether your kids can do a better job than you of running your business really involves recognizing that what could be weaknesses in the first generation can actually be strengths in the second generation.